I guess he's a stand-up comedian and actor from Los Angeles. He's best known for his short-form comedy videos on TikTok and YouTube. He's also appeared on Sons of Anarchy and regularly tours the country with comedian Todd Royce. I'm excited to welcome Josh Nasser. Why do you have to bring up Todd Royce? Why do you have to bring up Todd Royce? He's one of my best friends, and all we do is just we just harass each other. That was know? that was one of my questions for you because when Todd came on, he was. He was taking a couple of friendly shots. Do you have any to throw back his way? Well, Todd, um, he works on his weight, and I always call him a health nut just in general. Hey, how are you doing, health nut? I mean, we just pick on each other. He's married and happy. I'm not married and lonely, so that's his go-to with me. Yeah. Like, how is it? Been? Well, you know, I mean, whatever we can do to hurt each other, especially, by the way, so I deal, um, I get panic attacks sometimes, so that's when he attacks me. Oh, my God. Um, or he just dog which of like 17 years like a great dog and i'm always asking how's your dog doing you know it's just it, it but you know th this kind of goes into how me and my friends are you know our business you're alone a lot oh, you know for sure. we're, we're up social media podcasts you're in your place alone it's just to kind of remind you hey i'm here for you buddy we pick on each other and and let each other you know as as dark as we are with each other we're also Hey, I'm just calling to tell you I love you, buddy. Hope you're having a good week. Good yeah. day, you know? He's an awesome so. dude. I I really didn't know him very well prior to us podcasting together. Like, I had been around and worked with him a couple times. But his story is, like, just the background in wrestling and, and what he's brought to comedy. It's, it's cool yeah. to see somebody from, from that background. Yep. We all have different weird backgrounds. Mine, uh, I sold frozen meat door to door. I think I remember, do you remember us working together at laughs no. when you came through no. Seattle? I, I shot uh, your video and then I, I realized afterwards yes. I didn't have it in focus. So I, that was me. Yeah. Yes. Wait, did you shave your head? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, it's, I have been shaving it for a while, so it's was it shaved for funny. I just, is it amazing in your brain? Like I didn't remember that at all. And yeah. then once you said it, I go, I remember talking to you, eating French fries, sitting down. I was on the right. You were on the left. Yep. I remember all of it. Yeah, you, know? you were. I felt bad because I got like it was a good tape for you. I just it was out of focus the whole way through. And I think I messaged yeah. you. It's like this is just not even worth sending. Yeah, you're a bad person. Yeah, I, I screwed up big time, man. Um, before we get into just like, you know, your backstory and everything like that, I do got to say, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like subscribe notifications bell. Uh, throw a comment in for Josh or myself. And if you can just share this podcast with a friend or anybody, you know, but so you, did you start as an actor or comedian and where did you start? I started being very lonely and I go, I want to be on TV. So people love me. That's okay. literally where it started. <laughs> That's the backstory. Um, so any and all of it. It's now graduated to, I just want the money. I the book, <laughs> want the money. Um, but I started when I actually got my first break was doing crowd warm up. So if you go to a TV show, if you don't know listening or if you don't know, go to a TV show before the host comes on or while the host is on. Hey, this is what you do. This is when you clap. This is when you don't clap. This is where the bathrooms are. All right, everybody clap. So I did that and I became pretty successful at that where I ended up doing all the MTV spring breaks. So I'd be in front of 3000 kids for 12 hours all over the country at spring breaks and TV. When was I this? What? What year was that? 95, 96, 97, 98, really? 99. So you've been yeah, doing this for a long time. Yeah, like, I did that. And then I, the natural progression um, was I worked at MTV. Pauly Shore was there. So he helped me out at the comedy store. Then I started doing stand up. Then I learned what stand up was. I had a company during that time. And I wasn't really taking the art and the craft of it. I didn't know what serious was because I was running a business. And then um, pretty much after doing the, the frozen food thing, I literally had a house in the hills across from Kanye West. Like it was successful. And I just was so unhappy because I wasn't doing what I authentically wanted to be doing. And I was working with people. I'm very driven. So if you told me, you know, meet me in Wichita. Okay. And either I call you going, I'm here, or these are the three options of how I can get there. Can you help me? Um, when you're running a company, you're the person people go to. Mm -hmm. I'm not really good at managing people. That's the truth of it. So I had a big company managing. I had like 22 people working for me, and I just was done. I sold everything and started over doing stand-up, um, hosting TV shows. Then I booked Sons of Anarchy. Then I booked a show hosting for Discovery. Um, and then December 15th, 2020, 
I started social media and that's currently at 4.67 million followers and I think 1.8 billion views. Wow. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah. so you did, you didn't have any like, uh, back like commercial acting background or anything like that or like professional acting background. It was just oh, all stand up. I went to a uh, playhouse West acting school for seven years, but I didn't learn anything. I mean, I just was there for, for the socialization of it, to be honest. Like I didn't, I don't have a passion for acting like my buddy Rod. He loves to grab a script and break it down and the nuances. And what is this character's background? What's he feeling motivation? I do that with stand up and with social media. Mm -hmm. Acting is something I grab the words. It's pretty easy for me. Um, you know, so I was lucky. I, I auditioned for sons of anarchy and, um, it's nice. I walked into the room and the guy running the camera was a comic. I'm like, Oh shit, Chris, what up? So I immediately forgot I was auditioning. I just was able to have fun. Yeah. And then I booked it. That's awesome. What season were you on? I was on season six and season seven. Not a huge part, but I was in a lot of seasons. I was in the series and season finale. And, um, you know, it was fun. It was That's great. awesome. How, was it yeah. weird seeing yourself on TV like that? Or was no, because I, I hosted a show for ESPN called American Muscle, where I was the only host. And I flew around the world and interviewed bodybuilders and but I made it lighthearted. I was like the viewer, like, Hey, what do you do for cardio? Uh, I like to eat butter. Like I was just silly with these huge Dorian Yates kind of, Oh know. yeah. Um, I hosted a show for them. Um, I was on a show called singled out back in the day while I mean, when I was in college, I was on like this cheesy dance show on MTV. So like it's kind of became kind of cool, but like, just, I did it. You know, did you, you're originally from the East coast. I'm from Maryland originally. Okay. And then, when did you move out to LA? So I uh, went to um, Penn State. Um, and then after Penn State, I worked for a food company, like the meat company. And they were pretty big. They go, where in the country do you want to move? I go, I want to move to Los Angeles. They go, great. They opened me a whole store there. And then, um, you know, I was managing that. Then I went on my own. And then, I, like, as I said, I eventually just go, eh, I'm not a, I don't like doing this. Um, and then I booked a TV show for Discovery. I was hosting a car show for Discovery. Um, in the meanwhile of, of, of doing stand up and acting, there was a hosting academy. Like they have acting school, mm -hmm. they have um, hosting school, which teaches red carpet, teleprompter, cold reading, co hosting, podcasting, how to plug into the audience at home, how to be a good listener, um, how to be a generous host. So I went there for several years and then I started teaching there, which taught me the do's and don'ts of hosting. And then I started booking TV hosting. Well, I need to take some classes from you, man. <laughs> I, I actually do. I have an, I have an online coaching program which what you, teaches everything from A to Z with hosting, branding, social media, everything. What, like, can you talk about any, like just the general principles of that or like what it, like yep. uh, what people kind of miss sometimes with, I've never had anybody on here that has like a big background in hosting and a so good hosting, host is a big deal. Like it makes or breaks a show. There's different kinds of hosts. Uh, one of the best out there, is Ryan Seacrest because he knows what he does on each individual platform. Meaning when he does American Idol, you don't know what he does because he knows he's just there to balance everybody and make them the star. I don't remember a thing he said or didn't say. He's one of the best. When he does his radio show, it's the Ryan Seacrest show. It's all about him and his personality. Yeah. And if you think what he has to do on American Idol, if you think about it, it's my, my old hosting teacher said, it's the great balancing act. Perfect example is with Ryan on um, American Idol. He's balancing the judges in front of him, the live audience in front of him, the producers in his ear, the contestants, and the audience at home. And he does it all like he's just talking to you and you, you and your mom and me and, at, around dinner. So a good host knows that it's not about them. A good host also knows, that, like, for instance, you and me, um, my job is to make you look good and your job is to make me look good. If we both are helping each other, then both of us look good. Yeah, That's the ba basic tenet of hosting. Where do people miss most of the time? Like where, what's the most common mistake, would you say? I think one of the common mistakes people make when they're hosting is that they have to be perfect. Uh, one of the exercises we did is, uh, it's, you know, it's not what happens when you fumble the ball. It's uh, how you pick it up. So if I'm doing a hosting copy and I'm going, hey, everybody live from the XYZ and XYZ. Like, hey, guys, I, I must have a cat, a sweater wrapped around my tongue. This is what I'm saying. We're live. We're here. So if you have a, a mistake, everybody makes mistakes. So you make a little joke and then you plug right back into the audience. Yeah. Because again, the audience is not about you. It's funny. The first time I ever hosted a weekend, it was at laughs and, uh, 
I had never hosted anything in my life before. And um, I think in general with stand up, like the one thing you can't screw up is the headliner's name as the host. Like you got to get that. You can say all, all this stuff wrong. But it, and I, the, the guy going up when he was coming to the stage, I started bringing him up and I blanked on his name completely. Like I completely spaced on his name. So I started stalling. And I, I just started making stuff up. It was, a, I don't know if you know him, Yadoye Travis, but I would like, I had, I had no idea who he was. I, I thought he was like this, you know, massive name in comedy that I just didn't know. So I, I'm like, are you guys ready for your headliner? And everybody's going crazy. I'm like, this guy's been on Comedy Central. He's, he's been all over. He's the very, and I just spaced complete, like no idea what his name was. And I just started saying like, he's the very popular and famous Yadoye trap and it like clicked for me and I brought him up and he got up there and he's like wait a second I am not popular or fa-. like he he just gave me shit for like the next five minutes and it, it was like two things about that one um uh tv hosting is different than live event hosting and comedy mm-hmm. second thing is this is a perfect example of like you just figured it out you stumbled, you picked it up, and then he took it further. He fumbled, picked it up. He picked up your fumble and goes, "Hey, I'm going to make this guy look fun. We're going to." Ma-. And then he probably went into his act. Oh, for sure. Uh, it was yeah, actually very a very. Is, oh, go ahead. Very last thing is, you'll never forget how to say Kevin Hart. Yeah. So what I do if anybody messes up my name, they say Nazir Nasser. Who gives a shit? Work so hard that you, Puff Daddy, Diddy says this. Work so hard you don't have to introduce yourself. Oh, for sure. Right? So anytime somebody messes up a name, I go, I'm nothing. When If you mess up, if I'm The Rock, you'll never forget The Rock, will you? No, right? definitely not. Molly Shannon, these big dope names, Whitney Cummings, you'll never forget their name because it's them. That's, so that's, that's great advice, yeah. So are you, what What are you working towards now? Like I, I do want to talk about just all the TikTok stuff and, um, you know, just comedy in L.A., but like what what do you have going on right now? So I treat it very much like a business for me. Um, I had a, a kind of a guy who was a mentor. He said, well, what exactly do you want to do? And I was like, I want to do this, this, this. He goes, nope. What do you want to do right now? And I go, oh, good idea. So um, I was doing stand-up, hosting, acting, and then the social media took off. And I go, well, shit, people are paying attention to that, and that's the way I can sell tickets. So there's been many times I'm driving down Fountain Avenue, which is in Los Angeles. I can go left and go to the Laugh Factory and talk to the booker or try to get up or go right and go home and edit my social media, I go, let's do the social media. So in a year from now, six months from now, I can tour. So what I'm doing right now um, is social media, social media, social media. I'm also like, I just did Vegas uh, stand up. I'm in Maryland now. I'm doing a gig here. Then I'm going back to Vegas. So I'm still doing stand up. Social media is my first priority. So I can do stand up. Um, but it goes social media. Then I want to get brand sponsorship deals. So if you have a company out there, um, I authentically, without making it sound like a commercial, um, I want to give away your products, whatever product, whether it's Pampers, you know, diapers, toothpaste, trips to Hawaii, cars, cash, whatever. I'm that guy, like the Ellen Oprah undercover boss. Um, then hire a marketing team and then go on tour and do stand up, and then come back and do TV and film. Gotcha. Did How did you fall into the social media stuff, though? So I wish I remembered. I remember it's kind of cool. I remember the exact moment, but I didn't know. Like if we talk about comedy or um, TV hosting, I can talk about all the different fibers of what it is, agent, manager, this, that. When I did the social media, I didn't know what social media was. But what I did know on December 15th, 2020, I remember the day. I remember I was sitting in my old apartment building in the bottom um, parking lot underground, kind of dreary, not where I wanted to live. And I'm sitting in my car and I remember even my head movement. I go, I'm either going to be a success during this pandemic or a failure. And I remember going, I'm going to be a success. I, I remember the head. It's weird. I remember that. And I remember I had uh, hidden cameras and I was doing the car videos, but I didn't, I was just doing them because I had nothing else. To, I was alone. I lived alone. Everything shut down in Los Angeles. You know, you have the marches are going down right down front of my house like this. You have helicopters, which were all lower to let everybody know. Yeah. And I just remember going, yo, dude, I'm not leaving this pandemic not successful. 
So I started driving up and down the same street for hours, making U-turns. I have hidden cameras in my car and I pull up next to people and I say, like I'll pull up next to a couple go, excuse me, sir, if I gave you $500 million right now, $500 million right now, would you be willing to not talk to your wife for a year? So he'll look at her, he looks at me and he goes, uh, I do it for free. And then they drive away. So it's cute. Yeah. So I started doing that and it started taking off to the point where I'm like, oh, I have something to do. So I literally would shoot a video, pull over on the side of the street, roll up my windows, lock my doors. Because remember, LA was not safe. I'd edit in my car, upload. As soon as it got to in between 50 and 100,000 views, I'm like, okay, windows down. And then I drive and do another video. So I did that for 8, 10, 12 hours a day for about a year. And Every day. I didn't miss. Were, so you, were you just doing like multiple videos all day long? Every day, all day, two, three, four videos a day, every day, never stopped. And that was on TikTok. Then TikTok started to blow up. And I'm like, oh shit, let's try Instagram. Then Instagram started to blow up. Let's try Facebook. Then Facebook started to blow up. And then 103 days ago, um, I started uh, YouTube. And um, by the end of next week, or excuse me, by the end of this week, I should cross 600,000 subscribers. And I have in 103 days, I have 600,000 subscribers and over 425 million views. Wow. And that's in three months. So uh, now I'm spreading to uh, Snapchat and uh, Pinterest and uh, Twitter is the next goals. Like, did you have a background in social media before this? I mean, it. I don't know anything. I knew nothing. I just knew. It's amazing what you do in your life. And you can tell me what you do um, when you were younger. But, you know, the door to door sales make a joke. I sold meat. But if you think about what I did in door to door sales, I continue to knock on doors for eight, 20, 12 hours a day. People are no, no, no guns pulled on you. People were happy. They were sad. They missed you. They liked your product and you just kept going. And your very last door after eight hours, everybody's saying, no, somebody's like, well, here's 10 grand. You go. So what that taught me is you become almost numb. You just keep going. You don't think about what it is. Cause I'm sure if you thought about it, you wouldn't be able to do it. You just kept going over and over and over again. And that's what I did with my videos. I've been relentless. Were you inspired by a, a specific person? Or like, did you see someone else doing it? I, or I never watched the trends. I, I, don't, I don't know any of the trends. I don't know what anybody else does. I don't know anything. I do what I do. I use my own hashtags. I go against all of the rules of what you're supposed to do, I think. But I don't even know those rules to go against them. Um, I have recently looked at what a couple other people are doing who want to give away things. So I pull up next to people or I say things in public to them that are happy and vibrant. So if I want to give things away, I go, well, how do other people do it? And there's a couple people that do it. Mr. Beast, he's the biggest. You know, he'll rent out a football stadium and be like, all right, playing hide and go seek. Winner gets a million dollars, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where I want to go. So I'm watching a little bit what how they give things away. But no, and also I've been doing the same crap with my friends. I just now have, in fact, I did this when I was 18 years old. I was sending videos into MTV of me doing this. Also, when I was 30 years old, I hired a camera crew and I go, film me. I rented Suburbans. I drove cross country doing the same stuff. I didn't know what it was. It was called Good Clean Fun. Driving down Sunset Boulevard. Do you remember a guy named Tom Green? Yeah. Tom Green was next to me in my car. I was a DVD and I, I chucked my DVD from my car to his car. I'm like, yo, dude, I kind of do what you do. I want to work with you. He's like, okay. Sat on his coffee table for three months as a coffee mug coaster. And then one day he put it in. He's like, oh, shit. Called me optioned a TV show from me doing exactly what I'm doing now, but the technology was not there. Um, and it wasn't the right time for it. it just didn't go anywhere. And then I re basically did, I'm doing the same shit that I did when I was 18 with my friends in ocean city, Maryland beach. That's wild. I just now have the technology to capture it. Did you, so did you just happen to pull up next to Tom green and that's how that or literally never saw him before in my life. Called me, like, yo, you're Tom green. And I have my DVD in my car and I threw it. That's so him. yeah, it was called good, clean fun. Um, and, uh, I also, one of the things is I empowered myself over the break. I taught myself how to edit. I don't know how to edit. So I was like, well, I don't want to pay somebody and I don't have to wait. And I edit, I shoot, edit, color, correct, audio, correct, everything myself. Um, and as you know, in editing, it sometimes comes down to literally the millisecond. Should this be 13.3 seconds or 13.4? 
or, or 12.9, mm-hmm. which makes a difference between 1,000 views and 60 million. Is there anything you like that that you found that like people oversights that people might not be thinking about? Like, because I'm sure yep. I have a lot of people that are going to be watching and, and listening that are interested in growing a social media audience. Not, I'm not trying to like give away your secrets, but anything no that secrets. might be helpful. No, there is no secrets. The, the, the secret is be dope. Meaning that I think I'm one of one in the world that do what I do. There are, there is one other people that just go up and they compliment people, but I'm doing complimenting essentially, but I'm also adding comedy to it. So nobody's really doing that. Um, also my TV hosting, how to talk in a cadence, talking in a soundbite, how to get your question out within 6.3 seconds. So you can have them be the answer, allowing them to be the star. There's so much going on that I just know from 20 years of TV hosting. Yeah. And doing crowd work at stand up and hosting. So does that make sense? Oh, so, for sure. Um, uh, it's a different vibration. I mean, I could go into this, my theory of it, by the way, this is just my own nonsense in my brain. But when you watch my video, the first time you go, wait, what? Second time you go, oh, okay. And then you watch the third and fourth time to enjoy it. And I edit like that on purpose. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, it's, I've heard, or at least what I've read on in regards to social media is when you're posting videos, there should be kind of like almost like a short story. Like there's a beginning, middle end and a payoff. And so in like creating a question or a reason to keep watching and in all of your videos, like it, it creates that kind of confusion, a reaction, and then both of it, both you and whoever you're working with had like enjoy the payoff together. So yep. it's, it's, it's an like, easy formula. Yeah. And it works really mm-hmm. well. Like, it, I mean, I watched, I mean, as many of them as I could prior to come or you coming on and it's, it's a fun, like, I don't know. It's all, you were talking before we even started recording. Like you want to be, you want to talk about positive stuff on here and there's a lot of negativity on the internet right now. Well, not only that, I got this kind of from Eminem. Um, have you heard of his band D12? Yeah. I was just so listening to the the other day. I heard an interview what he said, and I'm totally paraphrasing, and I hope I keep it authentically to what he said. But he said the reason they didn't blow up as big as as we wanted was we happened to drop their um, music, and it just happened to coincide with after September 11th. It was around that time, and that aggressive kind of music wasn't what was needed at the time. You know, music and things come in wave, whatever's going on in the world. You know. So um, I figured, well, we have all of this stuff going on in the world, whether people being sick and however you feel about, you know, voting and all this stuff going on. So I go, well, what did Eminem do? I go, well, he just literally said if we had dropped it at a different time. So I go, why don't I go the opposite? And just because this dude's a genius in my mind, why don't I just put out positive stuff? Mm hmm. Makes sense because of all the stuff that we went through. I'm so glad you're talking about want, D12, by the way. I, yeah, <laughs> I love D12. They want, <laughs> they want positive cotton candy. I don't want to think, you know, my videos, you don't, you know, my mom has a sign in her kitchen, which I love, is uh, by a philosopher, educator, poet named Maya Angelo. People forget what you said and what you did, but not how you made them feel. Mm-hmm. You don't really remember my videos. You just go, that was cute. And you laugh. Yeah. So that was my idea. And I try to authentically stick to, I try to authentically stick to that. Like what will make somebody go, oh, I remember that was happy. I don't know what he did, but that was happy. So that's kind of my philosophy is really, if you can on social media, move them, whether you're an ice maker in fucking Wisconsin, be so dope at it where people are like, whoa, and they'll remember that. Or you're a chef, make them be like, wow, that was really good. Like really stand out, you know, and put your passion into it. Like, really, like, this is what you do. Did your background in stand up, did it help for this at all? Like, uh, I mean, what, what how did you, when did you start with stand up? Because you started, started at the in store. 1996, um, but I didn't really start the craft of it until 10 years ago. Like, okay. what we're doing right now and the nuances and going out to mics and da 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 da. But I started way back when, but I was only going a couple times a week and I was promoting a show, I was hosting, I wasn't doing the craft of stand up comedy. And did you start in L.A.? Yeah, I was doing crowd warm up in L.A. and then I started doing stand up in L.A. What is stand up like? What is it like to start in L.A.? I don't think I've had anybody else. I've heard horror stories that it's like probably the hardest place to start. Like, 
um, going back, I would not have gotten involved in any of the politics of this person likes me, this person doesn't. I was very much younger and immature and looking for acceptance. So that was more important to me than the craft of stand-up comedy. But do you think Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish give a fuck what's going on in the lower levels of the comedy club? No, they're out touring the world. So if I was more mature at the time, um, I wouldn't get just like with social media. You don't engage with negativity. You block and delete. You don't involve yourself at all. Um, one of my buddies, Justin, told me, he goes, I was having a problem with somebody. He goes, you know, you don't need to respond. And I was like, whoa. So if I text you, da, 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 and you don't, you don't need to respond. So I would have not gotten involved in the nonsense, and I would have worked on the craft and jumped up. Gerard Carmichael, I saw him come in and go, whoosh, because he was just dope. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. Do you think... Be good. Be this is a question I have because you seem very much like you admire these success stories of like Kevin Hart, Tiffany Haddish. Like sometimes I look at those people and I, I wonder like, are they kind of on and I like they're on an Island by themselves because they've had to work so hard to be successful, but like humor and success are not the same, you know, like hard work doesn't necessarily mean funny and, I would guess that like Kevin, like there are times where he's somewhat lonely because he's created such a, a space between him and his peers. Like he really doesn't have that many peers. Like, do you, is that like something you think about? I'll let you know when I get there. Yeah. it. I don't know. Because I guess it, I, I felt like the more I do comedy, the more things that come for me, like I, those relationships become more important to me. Like the people that help me out and the people that like, when you fall, pick you back up. Like, it's just such a, yeah, you just keep dope people around you. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but I think it would be like, no, I'm just not doing that. I just got people like Todd Royce, my buddy, Jesus, uh, my buddy Zane, you got dope people around you that my buddy Deidre, she's great. Yeah. Just get people around you that are awesome. Well, that's, you know, I guess what I'm pointing at is when you start in stand up you don't really know who your group is. Like you're trying to be cool with everybody, but like you're not going to be, be cool funny. with everybody anywhere. So just be funny. Yeah. They'll all want to be your friend. Yeah. Be an assassin, crush the mic so hard. People want to be your friend. Don't worry about being friends. Be funny. They'll, they'll come around. So you say you've, you've dedicated yourself to the craft. Like what does that look like for you with stand up? Not getting involved in any nonsense, sitting down, doing the writing, going to a mic, doing your set and leaving. Um, treating it like a business, whatever that is for you, you know? Yeah. Everybody has their own path of what that is. Um, yeah. You know, really it's, it's, there's no one, my friend said this, there's no yellow brick road, like in the wizard of Oz. Yeah. He's so undeniable. You can't be denied. That's what Steve Martin said. And, and I don't mean to sound like a motivational speaker, but I grab on my brain works by grabbing onto little anagrams and antidotes, antidotes, I think. Um, so that's, something be so undeniable you can't be denied be relentless be willing to work until two in the morning and get up at seven in the morning and do it again don't ask anybody for help learn the craft yourself and then if you want to hire out great i know how to edit now i can hire somebody to edit mm -hmm. you know within reason you know and besides like doing mics and stuff uh in in the air like are you doing quite a bit of shows in la i've, I've just heard it's like difficult to actually get up in la as a comic be so good you'll, you'll get up yeah. I don't list. I mean, yeah. Okay. Great. That may be the truth for 99%. Just be, be relentless. You know, you hear about these, these kids that come from nowhere that end up in the NFL. They had nothing. They didn't even have shoes going up. They were relentless and dope, you know, or a tennis player, you know, Serena Williams. That was great. You know, Venus and Serena, they had nothing from what I understand and look at them. They were, they put in the work, you know, I don't know if that's a great example, but you know, these people that are just so amazing that oh, come from nothing for sure. You know? So uh, I forgot to ask you one question about the TikTok stuff. You you've done like so many of these videos with like hidden cameras and have you ever uh, had any negative like event, like no, like scares or videos, maybe three or four um, that weren't great. And maybe it was, I wasn't like plugged in. I was looking off or I wasn't smiling or I wasn't, didn't have a little caffeine. It's like a comedy show. How many do you have that are bad? Yeah, a couple, maybe some aren't great, but no, you really just, I'm so lucky. And I've gotten, 
I've done this before. I know the cadence. I've been doing this since I was 18. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I lived on the street doing door to door sales for 21 years. Wait, so, so I know the you street. were just selling meat. Can you yeah. <laughs> what, like that's what kind of meat? Like what? You ever to Omaha steaks? Uh, I think so. Yeah. A vacuum pack, frozen gourmet. You pull up in a pickup truck. It, the truck is wrapped with beautiful logos. Hey, just finished my deliveries down the street. I have a couple extra trying to expand my route. You heard of Omaha Steaks? Great. I'll show you what I got. Great. Here's New York strips, Delmonico's. So you, you have a beautiful presentation. The product is, is really beautiful. You have brochures, 1-800 numbers, websites. Usually, God willing, you have a referral in neighborhood. So I go, you can call them. They'll call. Oh, I've been buying for years. Oh, great. So you, know, you have familiarity in the neighborhood. Um, yeah. And you just you just street, street merchant, street hustler. Yeah. And you do it. And people really like it. And then you stop by once every couple months and you build up you know, clientele and you just keep doing it. Have you reached out to them about being their spokesperson? Cause that oh. seemed Omaha state. Like, I mean, the back story One of, of my goals is to be a meat spokesperson for, <laughs> um, live video, like on my TikTok selling, or I want to do QVC. I applied to QVC cause just cause I want to be on QVC. I think yeah. it's oh, hilarious. So yeah, that's all coming. That's awesome. Yeah. It yeah. seems like a great fit for all that. So you haven't had any, like just, guy on the street type reactions where like safety wasn't an issue or any like because you've had yeah. a couple where I mean I saw one where you asked two guys like hey would you mind leaving some women for the rest of us out here and like there was never any like ambiguity or anything like that no cool I've done it long enough and one thing is if I've had a few that are like not the best people are going through divorce money issues health issues I would never post anything that makes anybody look bad because it bounces around the world and then they would see it and go, God, why do I, I don't want to do that to somebody. You have know you had I mean? to take like, anything would, down just for like people asking not to have only I think stuff? two or three, two or three people say, hey, do you mind taking that down? Who knows why? What I do is um, two things. One, after I film it, I go, Hey, I do TikTok. This is my, okay. I go, can I post it? Yeah, great. It's all on film. Second thing that I'll do is um, I take it down. Then I contact, I go already taken down. Most people like it because it's all positive. It makes them look good and I'll tag them in it, gain their social media following. So thank God I haven't had any problems. I've only had positive reactions really overall. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to ask you about just is like you, you did some acting like, do you have any decent stories? I mean, you were, you were working for discover, right? Like you were hosting a show and my cousin, he was on Nat Geo for like eight years, he was on that show Life Below Zero. And I'm no, I don't know if you're familiar with it at all, but um, he said working with networks can be pretty complicated and uh, creatively you kind of, there's like a give and take process. Like he, he wasn't hosting the show, he was like actually on the show and, and helping produce like the video for it. Like, did you, how was your experience with networks and, and the actual work. So um, he had a different capacity. I was not a producer, executive producer, creator on the show. I was simply a hired TV host. So whatever they told me to do, it's their their game, their rodeo, they're the judge, their jury. I did whatever they wanted. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to work with really kind people who knew what they were doing in that car space that I was doing hosting a car show. It, it never came up because everything they told me was, they were right on. I and mean, they've been doing this for years. Um, Sons of Anarchy, uh, when I went on Sons of Anarchy, I came on in season six and season seven when the show was already a hit. Mm -hmm. They had the finest catering. Everybody's making money. Everybody's happy. So I was lucky. I wasn't on this little, you know, crappy of a TV show. I did a commercial once and one of the production people on there were rude and to the point of almost kind of violent, like, get over here, everybody. And I looked at him. I go, no, dude. I go, I'll walk off the commercial right now. I go, I don't care about the money. And I called the casting director. I go, I will not work with these people if they're going to be rude like this. I go, I'm just a dude who hired a commercial. And the casting director showed up. She talked to the other talent that she hired and verified that what I was saying was correct. And I go, I'm leaving. I go, I don't care how much money you're paying me. I had the executive producer call me and I go, look, dude, I go, I don't know who this guy is, but keep him away from me. I go, I don't need the money. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I go, no one's going to be rude. And I go, and I go, don't ask me, verify it with the other people here they'll tell you that I'm not making this up. I'm the only one who said something. So when it comes to safety and kindness, I don't put, I don't care how much money's on the line, you know? Um, and it was verifiable. 
So that's been the only time I've had a problem on set, really. Um, I mean, I can think of a couple, a couple other few things, but yeah, you know, you learn just to walk away. For like a show like Sons of Anarchy, is, do you have any like behind the scenes, like sort of something you wouldn't normally know or, or think about as an actor on on a show like yeah. that? Like, Yeah, if you watch, um, I say it in my stand-up, but the truth is I wanted my friends at home to see me. So there'd be plenty of times that I'm like, I'm so I'm supposed like the camera's over here. Right. And I'll just like kind of lean in a little bit. <laughs> so you're just watching and you're, there was just literally no reason for me to be leaning in going, I'm talking to nobody going, I just <laughs> wanted my face and my friends would watch it and it's a drama. So you have that suspension of disbelief where they're like, and they're like, God, Josh, you ruined it. I saw your stupid face. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. I heard, yeah. you know, Don L Rollins, right? He's the best. Yeah, he's the best. He uh, he was talking about it was either he was saying that or Neil Brennan was saying how when he was on Chappelle's show, he didn't even have any lines and he kept trying to like just get in frame and like yeah. mouth lines and mouth like even when he didn't have spoken word, he was trying to like yep. express himself on camera, which is great. Dude, Donnell's genius. Donnell is the best. He's what up, son? Is, what up, son? That's what he says. He's so. If you if you've never seen him do a full hour, I've never seen a human being just like just like harass an audience for an hour straight of lap. Like it was it so there's good. no like that much energy in one space. It's it, it's insane. Yeah. All right. Well, I think let me see. I think that was pretty much all the questions I had for you, I guess just long-term you're looking to tour, you're looking to um, leverage social yeah. media. How has that been going so far? And you know, I haven't tried. Oh, really? I haven't tried. I wanted to gain my followers so I could do things like this. Mm -hmm. And look, um, one of the things I just saw a video of Conor McGregor, you know, what's one thing that you're trying to accomplish? And he said, patience, I'm trying to conquer patience. And I think I'm almost there, but I'm still working on it, essentially paraphrasing. And I'm learning, to be patient. My next goal is to set up a beautiful website. After that is to gather all of my followers information. So that way I don't go to Kansas if my fans are in Wichita. I don't go to Miami if everybody's in Washington. So we have such a wonderful um, time and age right now with social media where we can connect directly with the people. We don't have to wait for agents and managers. The goal is to um, build a website, um, gather people's information, get brand deals, hire a marketing team, tour and then come back and do tv and film I've, i don't have any doubts with you man i i think you're going to be successful and I'm trying buddy it's a lot of work man it's 15 16 17 hours a day it's it's relentless I and, mean, and also mental health is a big thing you have to have mental health buddies around you todd royce we talk no exaggeration eight nine times a week sometimes really really upset sometimes happy but you have to have a good mental health group around you because these apps are insane all of a sudden on YouTube, for no reason, all of my views stopped. I don't know why. Just one day I contact them. They go, oh, we changed the algorithm and it's going to benefit some people. Some people will hurt. Some people won't do anything. Go, I have 400 million views. Why would you affect me? Yeah. Why, why? But these apps don't give a fuck. Facebook hasn't paid me in two months. They just haven't paid me. Just didn't pay you. Contacted them 50 times. Finally, they go, oh, you have to change something in your banking. So... It's important if you do social media to have a good um, group of people around you. Um, Mr. Beast did an interview on Rogan, and he said, if I have five people each learning five things a day, and I have five things, I'm learning 30 things a day. Oh, for sure. So that's, you know, that's what I'm learning to do. And I'm, I'm as you can tell, I'm pretty intense about it. I know where I want to go. No, I, and that's really, I mean, I have a lot of people that are on social media and trying to leverage that and to hear somebody with success having to deal with those, it's like just new problems. It, it's, it's literally the worst part of social media is these companies. They are the worst. Yeah. All each and every one of them. They're, they're the worst. And then they don't answer. Oh yeah. They don't answer. You, you message them. They don't answer. It, that same cousin of mine. I mean, he, he was on Rogan. Like he, he went on Rogan, uh, he had left the show. He was trying to look at the next things to do. He had an Instagram account and just randomly out of the blue, they canceled the account and he still hasn't, he yeah. hasn't violated any of the terms 
and they yeah. will not give him a response. And he's got, yeah. I don't know how many hundred thousand followers on Facebook, but it's like he cannot reach his audience for just a random. I mean, if you're not a huge like verified account, it you're just a, like your voice just gets completely lost. So no, if, even if you are, I am a verified account. Yeah, hundreds of millions of views, and they don't answer me at all. But I would think you can't keep doing this to people. Eventually, an app is going to come along, and they're going to put creator customer service first. And everybody, dude, as soon as I can leave one of these apps that are abusive, one and I consider abusive the way they do it, you know, oh, yeah. because like you said, this guy put how many hours into it, and then they ban him. That's not it's right. crazy. It's insane. So, and and for him too, like I'm sure you know, Facebook versus Instagram versus TikTok, like all the demographics are different. And he was specifically like enjoyed interacting with that particular audience group was getting yeah. a lot out of it. And specifically like he went on Rogan to help promote growth in that area. So it's just, it's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Well, um, anybody watching and listening, where, where's the best way to, <laughs> speaking of the abs, where's the best place to get you? Where, where can well, they, they follow your stuff? Good because you can connect with your audience. Um, it's really simple. My name is Josh Nasser, like NASA, the space program with an R. It's just Josh Nasser on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, uh, they all have a little bit different videos. Um, some have compilations, some have long form. Uh, I'll be starting a long form podcast in the next month or so. So it's all great. Awesome. Hey, keep me posted on that too. I'd love to plug it on my end and help Thank promote you. your stuff. I got a lot of people that listen and watch and and if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to hit that like subscribe button, throw a comment in for Josh or myself and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss our upcoming content. Um, Josh, thank you for coming on. This was super fun. Really appreciate your time. Hey, no joking, by the way. Thank you for having me on because look, 15 months ago, 18 months ago, no one was asking me to do this. Oh, I think I told sure. you before, like, I'm just grateful that someone even goes, hey, I want to talk to you. I'm like, okay. So thank you, dude. I was looking forward to this all week. So yeah, I appreciate it. Definitely, man. I, I really, I felt like I learned a lot and I'm sure some, some people listening and watching did too. Um, and if you are listening and like the episode, rate and review us, um, make sure to uh, follow Josh and all of his stuff. And we are going to leave you today. Oh yeah. Follow us on Instagram to all this wonderful social media stuff that I get to say. Yep. Um, we're going to leave you guys with Jaga. I just make the way as I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you want to walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement. I just make the way as I don't write them. I can hear the lyrics in my spirit as I write them. Why you want to walk and talk just like them? I can't get caught up in all the hype and the excitement. Welcome to my wave pool, my wave pool. 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 Welcome to my wave pool.